If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Hey everybody, welcome back to another deck profile. I'm Richard, and today we're going to be going over my Youth Burke, uh Rebel Dress deck profile. So we have DBT06, which is our latest support for D-Series. And for this standard deck, uh, Youth Burke is basically taking everyone's hearts, so to speak. This is probably the most popular and also the most competitive deck in the standard format. So there's a lot of positives around this deck and I'm really excited to show you guys why I decided to build Youthburg and what's really fun about it. So let's just go ahead and dive right into the deck profile. We're gonna start off with our ride deck, like we always do, starting off with our starter. This is the one that came in the Youthburg trial deck. It's Youth Following Footsteps Youth. It's just like all the other starters, you get a draw if you're uh, going second, so nothing strange there, just using the one from the trial deck. Next up we're using the grade 1 youth, this whole ride line is mostly from the trial deck. So what the grade 1 youth does is van or rear during the battle, that this unit attacked it gets an extra 2k, so it swings for 10, which is okay. Second skill is when it's rode upon by Knight of Ardent Youth, you can Soul Blast 1, look at top 3, choose a Youth Burke or, you know, a Grade 2 or less. You can add the Youth Burke to your hand, call the Grade 2 or less to a regard circle, and the rest go to the bottom of your deck. So you're going to get something out of it. The only way you don't get anything is if you're running an absurd amount of, order, absurd amount of orders, and then you won't be able to proc it off, but this is just a really great card for building a board or getting the Youth Burks you need early. Then for the Grade 2... Same one from the trial deck. So what Ardent Light Youth does is when it's rode upon by a unit with the Rebel Dress ability, you can kind of blast one, add a great two or greater card from your drop zone to your hand. And then the second skill is when it's boosted, you can Soul Blast one to give an extra five. Um, you can do that if you would like. Uh, I do believe the Soul Blast is a little heavy considering the amount of Soul Blast we do have for the main deck. So I don't use the second skill, but the first skill just to kind of keep the number of youth burk cards in my hand it is very helpful if you want to discard it for the ride deck cost and lastly for our ride deck i am running skyfall arms youth burk for the ride deck so what skyfall arms does is it has a rebel just ability so at the end of the battle that attack you choose a rebel form card from your hand and you ride it as stand and you give it drive minus two it also has the enact ability where you can discard a card from your hand look at the top three Look for a rebel form, add it to your hand, um, or you can call a grade two or less unit, and then you put the rest on the bottom of your deck. Uh, I do know that some individuals are using the trial deck, Youth Burke, because they both have the exact same first skills, so the deck still works the same. I do like Sky Farms because I do like the option to be able to use the act ability uh, as soon as I ride into it from the ride deck. And I also like to play around with the space, but if you would prefer to use the trial deck one and run four of Skyfall Arms in your main deck because you can still Persona Ride on off of each other, you can do that. But for my deck, I am running Skyfall Arms as my grade three for the ride deck. So now we're gonna jump into the main deck. We got three more copies of Skyfall Arms because this is our playset. Uh, same card as before, just you know for Persona Ride. And then we're going into our Rebel Form cards, starting off with Rebel Form Zest. So what Rebel Form Zest does is when it's placed by the Rebel Dress ability, you can, if your opponent's Vanguard's grade 3 or greater, you can discard a card from your hand, get plus 10k and an extra drive. And then at the end of your turn, you choose a card the Rebel Dress ability and you write it as Rest. So this basically goes back to your soul. This is really nice just because the extra drive does help you get triggers. And it can also kind of pressure your opponent thinking, oh no, if they get a crit, I lose. So it's a welcomed addition to the Youth Burke deck. And this is a really great card. So definitely a four of. And then lastly, for our Rebel Form cards, we're running Rebel Form Zest. This comes as a playset in the trial deck. So Zest is same sim similar skill uh, when it's placed on Van by Rebel Just Ability. It gets an extra 15k. And if you Persona Road, it gets an extra crit. So this is very good pressure for the late game if your opponent's at four damage. Same skill as Gust. It goes back into your soul and you ride Youthburg from your soul's rest, but this is also nice just because it's free. Yeah, the power is, is bigger and it gets an extra crit for pressure. So being able to pick between the two uh, is really nice. 
Now we're moving on to grade twos. We got some really decent grade two support for Youth Burke and DB206. We got four copies of Schneisel. So what Schneisel does is when it's placed on rear, you kind of blast one, look at top five, add a grade three Youth Burke from your deck to your hand, and this unit gets 5K. Second skill is when you're when this unit attacks a Vanguard, if your Vanguard uh, was placed by riding a grade three, so insinuating you already Rebel Dress, you can give your Vanguard 5K. So it can make your Gust or Zest a bigger, beefy boy. Um, but this is also just helping you search for youth perks that you need so you can perform Rebel Dress so that it's a very welcome addition to the deck. All right, and then next for grade twos, this is also another card that came in the trial deck, uh, Kadwala. So I'm running three copies of Kadwala. You can run four if you'd like, I'm only running the three. What it does is at the end of the battle attack, you soul last one or tie this unit. If you have four units, you look at the top three, add a grade two or greater to your hand, reveal it, uh, and then you shuffle your deck and you draw. Or if you don't reveal a card, you draw. <laughs> Sorry, that would be busted if it let you plus two, yeah. So if you end up not searching anything, let's say if you get all triggers from your top three, you can still shuffle, then afterwards still draw a card so you still get something out of it. So this is just a really, really good resource card. Helps you search for your youth perks um, and also just getting any other grade two resource you need. Maybe you want to get another Schneisel. So it's, it's also a really good card. For space reasons, I'm just running it at the four. I mean, I mean at the three, you can run it at four if you like. I might play around with it going back and forth. But this is also just a really good card. And lastly for our grade twos, I'm running the one uh, Maple. So Maple is a the greater card, but we are using it for the first skill. Its first skill is when your grade three or greater Vanguard is placed during the ride phase, you can, uh, if you do not have another unit with Na Maple on the board, you can call this from the drop zone. So that's why we're running the one copy. You can use this as discard fodder so that when you ride into your youth perk from either the ride deck or when you just ride normally from hand, you can just call this back and you can just get a free body. So it's just a free grade two that you can call either just to have in the front row or just to you know fill up your board for if you intercept and you wanna move it up afterwards, it's uh, a free card, so to speak. So that's why we're running it at the, the one copy. Uh, if you don't have Maples, you can run the four Cadwalla. If you don't have Cadwallas, there's a grade two that gives Youth Burke and that, that gives itself five shield if you have a Youth Burke Vanguard. That's what I was trying to say. So there's a lot of different options you can run. Uh, this is the grade two lineup that I'm working with right now. It's pretty fun thus far, so I'm enjoying it. All right, so now we're moving on to grade ones. Starting off with a really good staple for pretty much most Keter Sanctuary decks unless you're playing Bastion. It's four copies of Painkiller Angel. Uh, Painkiller Angel is very simple. It's at the end of the battle that it boosted. You soul blast one, retire this, draw. So being able to draw cards and filter through your deck can help you find more resources and especially youth perks. So definitely want to run Painkiller. So yeah, if you're definitely planning on building any Keter Sanctuary deck in the future, either youth perk, the Greya, or Hex Orb, or any other new support that's going to be coming out in the future, I highly recommend picking up some Painkiller Angels. Um, Bushra, please reprint this card. It's just really too good not to have. All right, next up, we're running three copies of Menacing Tiger. I really like Menacing Tiger a lot because of the fact that it can help you build a board, which this deck doesn't really do that much. It's kind of really focused around the Rebel Dress ability and none of the Rebel Dress or Rebel Form cards help you make a board. So being able to have cards that can help you keep your board consistent is really helpful. Medicine Tiger is when it's discarded from your hand during your turn, you counterblast, call us to rear as rest. And the second skill is when it's placed on rear, soul blast one, choose one of your vanguards, it gets 5k. So I do like it, even though it calls the card as rest, you're able to at least have it on the board. So for the following turn, you restand it during the stand phase and you have a booster. So being able to maintain a back row, especially because uh, the painkiller angels end up retiring themselves. So having menacing tigers on the board is nice and also being able to discard for cards because we have Gust that, dis that discards. So if you choose this as your discard fodder, you can at least have, you know, get a card back from that, which is nice. So I do like the three menacing tigers. We got our, our new, I would guess you would call it Sentinel Standard. Uh, we have our three PGs, the regular PGs. These are, um, I guess you can call them retrains of 
PGs from DVT-01, but with different names and art. They're, when placed on guard, if you choose one of your units and it cannot be hit, and if you had two more cards in hand, you discard a card. So we're running three of those so that we can run one copy of the Elementaria Sanctitude. So these came in a little promo pack from the trial decks. What it does is you only run one copy of this in the deck. It has Sentinel as well. And then if your opponent has triple drive, you can pay the cost for free. And the cost is play this card in the order zone, discard a card from your hand. If your Vanguard is grade three or less, choose one of your units and it cannot be hit. After you, afterwards, you remove this card from the game. So it's basically a fourth PG, but if your Vanguard has, if your opponent's Vanguard is triple drive, it's free. We do have great fours in standard. They do have triple drive. So the fact that um, if you're playing against any of those decks, you're able to just get this for free, which is really nice. So I believe this is pretty much going to be unless you have, unless you're playing one of those decks, which are the grade four decks, because you can't pay the cost unless you're grade three or less. Um, I feel like this is pretty much going to be the Sentinel standard going forward. This is also a really great card in premium. Just wanted to throw that out there. All right, now we're moving on to our triggers. Got our over trigger. This is our world original for English. And I really like how pretty it is, except for the fact that you can barely read its name. It's True Arbiter Dragon of 100 Swords. I can't read its name. <laughs> The, 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 sh the shine was too much, but she wrote. Um, it, all it lists is its additional effect because we kind of know what over triggers do at this point. It's the same as Armantanoa, so it gives your regrets the ability to perform drive, uh, drive checks when they attack. It's just a different artwork and a different name, and it's shiny. So we're running one of those. Then we are running three copies of Blade Feather Angel. This is our critical with a skill. What it does is at the end of the battle that it boosted, you put this into the soul, choose one of your units and it gets 2k. We do use a lot of soul in this deck, so this is helpful. Um, if you can call it out by random ability, does even just have to throw it down as a booster? It's a nice addition to the deck and giving another unit an extra 2k could help in the long run. So we are running the Blade Feather crits because crits win games. Speaking of crits, Two more copies of Vanilla Crits. These are the ones that came in the booster set. Uh, I just like the artwork because it's a golden knight and uh, I like my knights. So that's our crit lineup. My trigger lineup is a little wonky, but it's something I'm experimenting with and I've actually been enjoying. I'm running three of the Alpac. This is the front trigger with the skill. It's if your opponent's grade three, if your opponent's vanguard is grade three or greater, gets 5k shield. I like the shield and I do like the power that the front trigger gives, especially since you're getting four attacks. Uh, at least two of your rear guards are going to be getting the power from the front trigger, which is helpful. So, and obviously the shield is a really, is really great. Just 20k shield. Then I'm running two copies of draw triggers that protect, uh, protection magic Prorohi. Prorohi is similar skill. If your punch band goes great through greater, it gets 5k shield. I like running the draw triggers because we do have discard costs and we also are filtering through the deck. So being able to get a draw trigger, maybe draw into a youth perk, which can help a lot. So while you're drive checking, you just got your youth perk for your rebel dress turn. And then also uh, for discard costs for Gus. So if you don't really have anything in your hand, you want to discard, if it's all triggers, at least you can discard the draw trigger. Um, also damage checking draw triggers is uh, pretty busted. So I do like running draw triggers. If you prefer, you can do the eight crit four front. That's something you can do as well. Uh, for now, I am working with this. For our heal triggers, I'm running one of each. I'm running one copy of Hardiness, Tear, Sorceress, and one copy of Invigorate Sage. Invigorate Sage is the one where if your opponent's attacking unit has attacked, more, has attacked two or more times, this gets an extra 15 shield. So this works against decks like Flagberg, uh, Mahar Nirvana when their Virena restands um, against Brusk. I keep forgetting the name, but there's a grade two that restands. And then um, there's other decks I can't think of at this moment. Well, obviously Bastion, there we go. That's another one where a unit can attack more than uh, once. So cards helpful against certain decks in the meta. So I do like to have that option in the deck. The other heal, which is Hardiness to your Sorceress. It's if your opponent's unit is critical plus two or more and they didn't get it from a trigger effect, 
you can get give this an extra 15k. So Bruce, Bab Zorga, even with uh, Roboform Zest, these are cards that gain criticals by card abilities, not by trigger effects, so this can help gaining shield in that regard as well. Uh, if you want to play around, you can do two and two or uh, just one and do the vanillas and see how that works for you, but I'm working with one of each just to kind of see what my locals are like and kind of seeing like, oh, well, if I had two of this instead, it might be helpful, but in the meantime, uh, this is working out for me. Lastly, for our triggers, two vanilla heals. Um, it's just because I feel like uh, the the new heals, they only have the 10k shield, so if you're not seeing the your opponent proccing off those abilities to get multi-attacks or crits consistently in almost every single attack, the loss of the 5k shield really does make an impact. So I would say I still like to stick with the vanillas just to have that extra 15 shield, and also we want to have uh, you know, four heals in the deck. So that was pretty much it for the deck profile. Thank you all for watching. Um, I have already posted that game where I played against Miles, and yes, I'm aware that <laughs> I misplayed with the Bramadas, but uh, thank you all for letting me know. And uh, overall, this deck is really, really fun, and obviously getting four attacks in standard, especially from a Kedis Entry deck that just focuses on gaining resources and drawing a bunch of great threes, we are riding all the time, you're drawing so much that um, you're filtering through your deck, you're finding your other copies of Youth Burke from skills like, um, I was going to call him Sylvester, what's his name? Schneisel. Uh, Schneisel helps you get multiple copies of Youth Burke, so that way you can Persona Ride way easier, making the deck super consistent, super powerful, super aggressive, and, uh, and you can kind of see how this deck ends up being a tier one deck in that regard. Um, so yeah, thank you all for watching, um, hopefully we'll get some more standard games in the near future, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!